Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework Extension tutorial series. This is tutorial 2 using page placeholders from application customizers aka Hello World Part 2. And this is the general availability September 2017 edition. Now this has a dependency on the tutorial 1 where we actually created the basic structure for our application customizer. So we created the application extension, we tested out and debugged the application extension against the live site. And in this tutorial we will actually start extending this and to take advantage of the page, uh, page, page placeholders which are available for you to add your additional JavaScript uh, implementation and JavaScript experience within the modern experiences in SharePoint Online. So let's actually move in uh, directly on the tutorial and let's open up our application customizer code underneath the source. Uh, we'll open up our Hello World application customizer TS and we start modifying this one. So to be able to actually take advantage of the application uh, page placeholders, uh, we need to import a few additional things. So let's actually update this one to have page placeholder content and also the placeholder and name. So we get those objects uh, from the SP application page available for us. Now, then uh, we need to actually import a few additional things. Uh, so because we want to actually output some uh, settings and we want to output some things um, to these placeholders, page placeholders. So let's actually add this two imports uh, in our implementation. And you can uh, immediately see that uh, we're importing a SCSS file, which does not exist. We're going to create that one uh, uh, on the following step. So let's actually create that one. So um, because that's now missing. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to get back in here. I'm going to create uh, that file. And that's going to be our styling file. So that's going to provide us the styles uh, to output the settings or output the stuff or, or output our uh, HTML to a top or bottom placeholder. And we're going to save that one. So let's get back on the on the here. We're good to go. So the basic styling is in the in this one. It's going to be then included as part of our bundle, and that's going to be controlling then the output sections of the place uh, page placeholders. So here in the extension side, uh, we need to then get access on the actual placeholders. But before we do that, so uh, let's actually modify slightly our existing property uh, property setup. So we want to actually we don't want to use a test message as a property. We want to use actually top and button as our property. And this is this will be providing us values which we will then show in the top section of the page and in the bottom section of the page. Um, so I'm actually modifying the properties uh, interface to have top and button, which means that I need to also update my query parameters, but we'll get back on that one slightly later. And then uh, let's actually create a few um, internal uh, variables here. So inside of our application customizer class, I'm going to create these two placeholders uh, waiting here. Uh, we're going to use those within our code. And then in the init. So we're going to modify the init slightly. We're not interested on actually just pinpointing a, a dialog uh, as an output. We actually want to uh, get um, or we want to render placeholders within the uh, with uh, out within the within the page so we want to make sure that this, the, the re, we are rendering the placeholders properly within the page so let me slightly adjust this one and uh, smaller uh, so you can see what we're doing here so we are doing two things in the on init we are setting uh, the change event uh, which is pointing to this upcoming render placeholders uh, method and this will make sure that if there's a if there's changes related on um, existence of placeholders in a page our existing methods responsible of rendering those elements will be called. So in certain scenarios, um, it might be that suddenly footer is going to go away or we're going to get rid of the header uh, or the header section or the top section of the page. Um, really unlikely scenario, um, but that's on, and mainly only for, let's say, pop-ups and dialogues and all of that. Uh, but that means that in those scenarios, if that happens, it's, it's a good practice that we would re-render our placeholders. So we'll call that logic again. And then in the on init, we're also calling the render placeholders. So making sure that uh, we are actually rendering our placeholders properly. And then uh, we're going to actually paste in, I'm going to copy this directly from the written tutorial. I'm going to paste in the method 
which is uh, the render placeholders inside of my class. And let's actually go this through one by one. Uh, so uh, there's no, uh, it's clear what this one actually is doing. It looks pretty long, but actually it's a duplicate of the code for top and bottom. So there isn't actually that much uh, information here. So first of all, uh, we are outputting some uh, logging information to the console, which is always useful. We understand how the code is getting uh, executed. Um, and then in here, we're checking if the top placeholder doesn't exist yet, uh, we're actually gonna get an instance on the, on the top placeholder using this try create content uh, and placeholder provider. And we are requesting the placeholder name top. So from here, right now, you can see that we have two known, well-known placeholder names, which are bottom and top and you can get access on them. In future, uh, there might or might not be more of this, uh, and we'll see uh, how the, what the future will come. Now, if we did get that, if we didn't get the instance, we're just out unlocking or locking that pay, we didn't actually get that, and we're not outputting anything on that uh, section. If we did get the locking, we'll continue in here, or we did get the instance, the placeholder instance, we'll continue in here. And in that case, we're checking if we got a property called top as part of the, the properties for the extension. So as part of the query parameter or as part of the configuration in a site level. And if we got that, um, then uh, if we didn't get that, we will actually get, put a, output a default message. But if we got that, we're actually outputting that uh, message in here, uh, outputting that to the top placeholder using the styles which we actually created in, in the SC SS file. So the, the styling uh, is being used here. We're using the app and top uh, as the styles, and then the value of the top string as uh, string is getting output uh, as as the value or inside of the of that header section, so to say, in that this particular this particular case. And then we're doing exactly the same for the bottom placeholder. So that's the reason why it looks that there's quite a lot of code, but there actually isn't. Uh, so we're getting instance to the bottom. Uh, we'll check if the placeholder exists, uh, if, if the properties exist, and then we're outputting that uh, as part of the, uh, outputting the HTML and the values as part of the uh, bottom placeholder. Now, we also did have a reference on on dispose uh, in here. Uh, so uh, in here, there's an on dispose, and there was a one for also for bottom. So let, we need to actually get that one included. So let's get the included that one in our in our class, and we'll be good to go. So now we're basically good to go from a implementation perspective. So let's flip back on the console. Uh, where do we have our console? And let's see if we do have any uh, issues in the console. So in my case, the console was running all the time. And this means that at some point of a time, it was unable to compile the existing implementation. Uh, so let's actually do a control C. So I'm going to terminate the console. And I'm going to clear this one up. And then I'm going to do again gallop serve and no browser. And this one will bundle the code. Uh, it will run through the, the basic bundling process and will make sure that everything is uh, up and running. The references are fine. The TypeScript is being checked uh, and it's getting transformed uh, as a JavaScript for the browser. And there we go. Now our implementation is ready to go. And now we need to again go to the actual site to, to the live testing on the live site. So let's move, move there. So we're going to use the same documents folder here. I'm going to actually get rid of the or uh, the, the previous uh, query parameter. And I'm going to press enter. So we have a clean setup uh, for this particular site. And then uh, we did have a small modification, uh, which was related on the extension properties. So we need to modify our query parameter slightly. So I'm going to copy this structure again from the written tutorial where we had uh, the button uh, because we had the button property and the value for that one and the button property and the value for that one. The thing, the one thing what we need to remember always is to get and double check that we're using the right manifest ID. So the debugging is working properly. There we go. So this one was the manifest ID which is available for the manifest of the extension. So if I come in the manifest of the extension, it was this ID in the manifest code. So now, uh, in this case, I've updated properly. We do have two different properties, top and button. So I can actually get that one. Let's copy the query parameter. Let's move back on our modern experience uh, in a classic team site in this case. Obviously, the same thing works within the modern team sites. 
pressing enter and accepting the debugging strings and we can actually see how our top section and the bottom section of the page are being filled uh, with the placeholder. So now we are outputting the property values as a text to those sections uh, within the page. Which basically means following, so if I want to modify this one, uh, bottom section aka uh, footer, so I can actually modify that query parameter or the instance or the parameterization of that uh, extension. So we can actually see now a different updated uh, section or updated string and behavior of the extension in the footer section. And again, that could actually be much more significant change uh, based on your based on your actual implementation. But that's it uh, for this tutorial. This was the tutorial two, where we walk through how to get access on the placeholder page placeholders and how to how you modify the page. Uh, you can then inject whatever or embed whatever HTML pages contr uh, controls uh, output whatever is needed using these placeholders. You could have a let's say dynamic. Uh, footer which is showing the specific uh, information on a specific person or specific site. Again, up to you on thinking through uh, how do you want to take advantage of these well-known sections in a page which we guarantee to be there. But thanks for watching this one. In the next uh, step, we'll be deploying our extension uh, to the SharePoint and we'll be testing out this extension uh, from the SharePoint without the debugging strings. But thanks for watching and hopefully you'll follow up on the next one.